Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna go over all the cool stuff I got in this month's manga haul. So I hope you enjoy. Let's start with some Viz Media books. The first one on the list here is Pokemon Adventures Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire Volume 2. This is surprisingly thick compared to the normal uh, Pokemon Adventures manga volumes. Obviously, this is a two-in-one, and I am so excited to check this out. I really have fond memories of the Gen 3 remakes. I loved playing them when they came out, gosh, a decade ago on the 3DS. That's insane to think about. I told you I would catch up and here I am officially caught up with Dark Gathering. Here we have volume six and volume seven. Genuinely one of the best modern shonen horror books that you can get. The story just keeps getting creepier and creepier, which adds to the overall quality of the book. Volume two of In the Name of the Mermaid Princess. I really enjoyed volume one. This is a nice shoujo adventure of this young mermaid princess that is facing uh, discrimination and a totalitarian government that does not want her to succeed in unifying the uh, hybrid animal beast species that live in their kingdom. So it involves a lot of political stuff while also touching on a coming of age story as she learns more about herself and gaining her uh, rightful abilities because she's been neglected the part of being a mermaid creature. They want her to remain human. So there's that liberation aspect and yeah, a bunch of other characters show up with some usual hijinks in runaway stories like this when it involves uh, political characters. Another one that is close to wrapping up is Blade of the Moon Princess Volume 4. I'm waiting for that Volume 5 to finish the whole thing and give you my proper thoughts on it, but this is a lovely series that I think could have gone on for a little bit longer, not just five volumes. The premise is fun. You have uh, the reimagining of Princess Kaguya from the moon and how she has been exiled to Earth and is trying to survive and taking down foes and all that stuff. So it's a nice action fantasy movie mix that could appeal to a lot of people out there. So give it a shot if you haven't already. Blade of the Moon Princess. Now I don't really have space for this, but I kind of got tired of not adding some classics to the collection. So I started fixing that with this first acquisition here of many. This is Banana Fish Volume 1. I've actually never read this. I've always wanted to read Banana Fish. I liked the MAPPA adaptation. I think it was MAPPA. And I was excited to own the original. However, again, limited space, but I'm moving some stuff around around and making some weird moves that could potentially leave me with a lot of space. So fingers crossed, everything pans out and we can actually display all these new manga properly. But we're here to talk about Banana Fish. Super excited about this. And I know I still got a long ways to go, but I did order some more volumes of this series. I just didn't get them in time for the recording of this video. So only volume one here of this Shoujo Beat release. From Titan Manga, we got two releases. The first one is the final volume of The Great Yokai War, Volume 3. This wraps up the adaptation of the screenplay of the movie of the same name. That's a tongue twister right there. But The Great Yokai War is a lot of fun with great characters. And if you like yokai, if you like supernatural stuff, you'll be right at home with this. It's a nice, concise story with a great start, middle, and end, as you have the tale of these two brothers that are trying to reconcile and become better siblings while also having the enormous task of stopping the bad guys from destroying Japan and the world. Of course, many yokai are involved. Also, another volume three is Alpi, the Soul Sender. This is sort of a dark fantasy-esque adventure mixed with magical girl sensibilities. As you have Alpi, she is tasked with eliminating these magical creatures that are involved with a lot of energy and human interactions and how they influence the world around us. So she is sort of this priestess character and is using her abilities to dispel these creatures and their 
energies and send them off into the afterlife. A lot of fun. Obviously, Alpi is super young, so she has a lot to learn, and she has a rival character who is sort of butting heads with her. We saw that in Volume 2, and it continues the plot line from there. I haven't read all of Volume 3 when I recorded this video here, but it is a lot of fun. I do recommend it. We are, I believe, halfway done with this, so not a long-running series. I am excited to check it out. I really enjoyed the first two, and Volume 3 looks just as great. From Square Enix Manga, I got Smoking Behind the Supermarket with You, Volume 2. I reviewed Volume 1 on the channel. If you guys want to check it out, go uh, look under the uh, reading vlog segment. And I enjoyed Volume 1, though I was a little bit skeptical with the idea of this being a long running series because the premise, I don't see it lending itself to like 20 volumes of this. You could be done with one chunky book, and that's cool. <laughs> so we continue the adventures of our two main characters and how you just follow their slice of life elements and uh, the main character is meeting the the young girl behind the supermarket and he doesn't know that she's actually the clerk that he has a slight crush on and for her she gets to toy around with him because of his naive nature so it's more of that with more stuff more shenanigans happening in this volume so yeah my, my point still stands but it's it's a it's such a fun wholesome experience that you kind of want to keep going you know now this from seven seas is one of my hyped up most anticipated releases of the whole year for me just for me please before you dislike the video this is just for me here we finally have mysterious disappearances from nujima i am so excited to have this i really enjoy the manga i have to confess that i've read some of it online and I love the anime adaptation of it which is currently airing as of me talking in this video and it, this is a lot of fun. If you enjoy things like Call of the Night for example over at Viz with Kotoyama it has the aesthetics and the vibes going where you have an ordinary character being involved in something unnatural if you will and it involves folklore urban legends and it has a very distinct stylized art which i am a huge fan of i like this type of artwork and this manga it tackles supernatural stuff and yokai and urban legends it but it has a bit of a not safe for work twist to it so if you don't dig that that's perfectly fine i don't mind it and I, I i guess i think it gives it a little bit extra flavor a little bit of spice to it which is fun speaking of folklore and yokai we got kemono jihen volume 11 i need to catch up i'm like five volumes behind on this so super happy about this uh the art looks fantastic i have no idea what's happening but it looks amazing i probably should not be spoiling it for everybody and myself so let me just close this up and continue on with the haul Volume 2 of A Cat From Our World and the Forgotten Witch. I talked about Volume 1 back at the start of the year, 2024. It's insane that we've had to wait so long for Volume 2, but here it is. This is a lovely, fantastic, whimsical series about this witch who summons a familiar, but it ends up being a cat from our world. And the cat is huge because apparently in this world, everybody's tiny. So that's the size difference. And it, it has sort of a Frieden-esque twist to it where you have a former heroic character now much later in life and maybe she's not viewed as heroic as she once was misunderstandings in some areas with the population so she's sort of seen as this mysterious witch whereas before she was a hero a mage that helped defeat the demon lord and stuff like that so i can definitely see why people would compare it to Frieden. obviously this is much different because of the whole cat thing and the actual cat is extremely adorable and super fluffy and I just love it to death. I think this is one of my favorite currently released manga involving cats. I really like this and I hope you give it a shot. A really wholesome fun experience. Don't call it mystery omnibus volume 4 which contains 
volumes 7 and 8 inside. Of course, these are two in ones continuing Totono's adventures and mystery solving. And I am behind on this series, so I don't want to read too much into what I'm looking at here, but it looks great. This is a, a wonderful series that I think here in the West is severely underrated. And I hope more people would be interested in picking this up. This is a phenomenal mystery detective slice of life series that I highly recommend. I put out a singular video on it, some of my impressions on it, and a slight review on the first Omnibus edition. So definitely check that out if you're interested. From Yen Press, we got Toge Oni Volume 3. This is such a bonkers series. I thought I was going to stay with the whole uh, primeval before, you know, time before time aspect to it. But there's some time travel aspects. There's some modern stuff. There's magic. There's gods and uh, other deities and monster creatures and just insane things all around. And I love the art. I am all here for Toge Oni, Primal God in ancient times. The Summer Hikaru Died, Volume 1. I've recently talked about this. I'm late to the party, but man, I'm glad I'm here. Volume 1 was phenomenal. Just a really nice exercise in building tension with great characters and great artwork. I picked up more volumes. They didn't arrive in time. So trust me that going forward, I will be talking about it more in other reading vlogs and stuff like that, because I, I was definitely hooked with Volume 1. This is a really impressive drama, kind of cosmic -y horror book. And speaking of Cosmic, we got God Bless the Mistaken Volume 2. Volume 1 was one of my anticipated releases of this year. So happy that we have Volume 2. And this continues more of the exploration behind the glitches and the main characters trying to learn about them and living their best lives. It's It's got slice of life elements to it, but it's the fact that they take their time to explore the phenomena and bring you whimsical adventures with each chapter really sets it apart from most of the other books out on the market. Handyman Saito in Another World, Volume 4. This is probably one of the best modern examples of isekai in a way that it just works. This is a great series that blends dark fantasy or just fantastical elements with the isekai tropes and genre and all that. In a lovely little package, we have a very wholesome roster of characters, beautiful art, highly detailed action, and this volume is where everything just comes to a boil and we get some resolutions to the main conflict and fights and all that stuff. I don't want to reveal it, but if you know Know, you know and it sets up more stuff for the future i really really enjoy this i think this is a must read if you're into fantasy a little bit of comedy of course and if you like isekai stuff as well definitely check out handyman saito in another world from Kodansha, we got Sugumi Project Volume 5. This series is a lot of fun. If you enjoy stuff like Hell's Paradise, this is a little bit more modern, not as rustic as Hell's Paradise. And it sort of has that Suicide Squad type of feel from DC Comics, as you have these characters venturing into unknown territory for a shady uh, recon mission and all that stuff. Of course, they're mutated hybrid people, creatures, there are gorgeous landscapes, great action. This has a little bit of everything, just really unique and visceral at times. I highly recommend Tsugumi Project. We are, I believe, two or three books from completing the full set. From Oma Sei, we got Volume 2 of Bloodblade. You might remember me talking about Volume 1. I love the premise. It's a lot of fun. It's very action-packed. It kind of reminded me of Helsing, where, uh, you know, it's not the most intricate, detailed thing in the world, but you have a lot of fun with it. It's a, like a monster B-horror mashup type story, and it works. But unfortunately, there were some technical aspects with Volume 1 that kind of put me off. From what I'm looking at here with Volume 2, a lot of it seems to have been corrected, so I don't know what happened there. I'll do a deep dive later on one of my reading blogs, but I am excited to continue the story because I do like the premise of a female version of Dracula as she's running from the bad guys and seeking shelter in this ideal utopia of an island that we don't know if it exists or not, but she's on her way there, so we'll see what happens. 
One more book here. We got Magic Knight Ray Earth Part 1 Book 3. This completes what was released recently. Uh, or I say recently, but it was four years ago. Holy crap. The first uh, anniversary box set. I've mentioned this before, but you know, a lot of people are new to the channel. I love Magic Knight Ray Earth. I remember the games and I remember the anime and I've always wanted to own some of it. So with the manga, I was really excited for, but I don't have room for large box sets and uh, it was a little bit too expensive at the time. I, I think it's still pricey. And uh, these are a nice happy medium where you have a scaled down regular sized or, you know, larger trim compared to other volumes, but still smaller sized editions of Magic Knight Ray Earth. So now part one's done. Now we wait for part two to begin and be collected across three more volumes. Anime wise, I got three releases for you guys. The first one is Mob Psycho 100 Season 3, the end of the series, which I thought was spectacular. I really enjoyed how the series ended. And Season 3 had bombastic, epic, beautiful, amazing artwork and some of the most insane fight scenes I've seen in recent memory. Really, really top tier stuff. I love Mob Psycho and it's wild to me how distant the releases have been from each other. I remember getting volume one before major life events happen in my life. Kind of redundant, but you know what I mean. And then volume two came out and it was sort of the same deal. And now four or I think it was two and a half years later or three. Now we get volume three or season three, but here it is, Mob Psycho 100 Season 3. The 4K edition of Belladonna of Sadness. I must admit, I've never seen this, and I know it's one of those films that can be perceived as sort of an artsy fartsy anime, but I'm in the mood for it. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. A fantastic 4K transfer, if you ask me. I'm not an expert on it, so don't quote me, but to my naked eye, it looks fantastic. And just a really interesting visceral uh, representation of trauma, love, sexuality, and a lot of other elements that come into play in this movie. And last but not least, I am so happy Man, I am so excited that I finally own IGPX. I never owned the DVD releases from back in the day. I love this series so much. This is one of my favorite mech slash sports series of all time. I used to watch it. I, I watched it when it debuted back on, what, uh, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was, on Toonami and Adult Swim, and loved it ever since. And when they would do reruns, I would catch it as well. And I always wanted to own it. I never imagined that it would get picked up by Discotech and reworked, remastered, whatever into Blu-ray. And now I finally have it and can just watch it whatever I want. This is such a fun series with a great dub cast. I'm not a dub guy, but the cast list on this is pretty insane. Go check it out. Regardless, this is uh, such a fun sports series with a lot of highs and lows and drama and all that stuff. Oh man, I can't wait to revisit this modern classic in my honest opinion. Alrighty, there we go. That's the haul video. Of course, I'm always missing some stuff. I always have postal issues. I did get an order from Japan that got lost in the mail, so I'm, I'm asking for a replacement order. We'll see what happens with that. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. I truly do appreciate it. Leave your comments below if you want me to review a specific thing, or of course, tell me what you hauled lately. I'm interested in finding out about that as well. That's going to be it for now. Like I always say, thank you. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.